Hello, welcome to our channel. Today we are going to talk about meta programming and we are going to dive deep into how meta programming works, what it is. We are going to take an example and uh, see how you can generate classes dynamically and modify classes dynamically at runtime, right? And also going to talk about risks and benefits. And one of the main things is what is meta programming used for, right? In the real world applications, where are those used for? Because this is heavily used in the industry, right? This is part six of our object oriented design course. So uh, let's start. So what is meta programming, right? So meta programming is basically a technique that, that enables a program to modify or generate its own code at runtime, right? So it basically enables developers to write code that inspect, uh, modify or create, right? New classes, methods and other program elements dynamically at a runtime. Right. So if you see this example, like the dynamic class generator that you see here uh, is responsible for generating the dynamic class and the method bytecodes. Right. So that is how you basically use meta programming. Where are meta programming used in the real world application? Let's start from there. Right. The first place is frameworks and libraries. Right. Extensively used in frameworks and libraries, meta programming uh, to provide extensibility and customization. Uh, options to developers, right? Frameworks like Spring, which is in Java, Django, uh, Python, right? Uh, they use meta programming heavily uh, to enable dependency injection, right? Aspect oriented programming, declarative configurations, right? These frameworks basically allow developers to modify and extend the behavior of the of their applications uh, by leveraging meta programming capabilities, right? Next is code generation. Yes, meta programming is commonly used for code generation tasks like we talked about. It enables automatic code, uh, uh, automatic generation of code based on various templates or models which saves the developers from writing repetitive boilerplate code, right? Uh, you might know about tools like uh, Apache Velocity, uh, Codesmith and uh, Ruby on Rails, right? Like they all leverage meta programming techniques to generate code for database access layer, service, web service clients, right? And other repetitive uh, code patterns. Next is domain specific languages, which is DSLs. Uh, it meta programming is instrumental in building uh, DSLs, which are tailored to specific problem domains, right? So DSLs provide specialized syntax and abstractions that basically enable domain experts to express their ideas more naturally, like tools like uh, JetBrains MPS, right, which is meta programming syntax and Xtext. So they allow developers to define and create DSLs which uh, using meta programming techniques, right? Next is serialization and data transformation. Meta programming plays a crucial role in serialization and data transformation frameworks, right? These frameworks allow objects to be serialized in various formats, right? JSON, XML, and so on, or transformed between different data, the data structures, right? Uh, libraries like Jackson uh, or JSON or uh, Jackson in Python, right? They all employ meta programming techniques to analyze object structures at runtime and generate serialization and deserialization code dynamically, right? And next is dynamic configuration and plugin systems, right? Meta programming enables dynamic configuration and plugin systems in applications. Basically, these systems allow users or developers to to extend the functionality of an application by adding or modifying components dynamically, right? Tools like Eclipse, right, or WordPress, right? They leverage meta programming techniques to support dynamic configurations. And they also enable third party plugins to extend the functionality of their platforms, right? If you if you look at Eclipse or say IntelliJ and all, all these IDs, they have a certain set of tools, but they also allow the plugin architecture so that if someone else is building a plugin for that platform, that can be easily uh, plugged and be ready to be used, right? So that is where meta programming is. How they are doing it? They are doing it via meta programming. And last but not the least, aspect oriented programming. We are going to have a separate, complete topic uh, and a video on aspect programming because that is a bigger, to bigger uh, topic to discuss. But basically, aspect oriented programming is a paradigm that separates the cross cutting concerns from the core logic of an application, right? So meta programming is employed in uh, aspect oriented programming frameworks like aspect j or post sharp right uh, to basically modify the behavior of existing classes by adding uh, or intercepting methods dynamically this allows developers to handle cross cutting concerns such as uh, logging or security uh, caching right uh, separately from the main application logic 
right so these are various ways and this is just a set of most commonly used and application use cases of meta programming but meta programming is heavily used through almost every tools that you are uh, you are using today to write code uh, to generate code right because it is all applications that you are seeing at the end of it is byte code and at the end of it is the code that you are writing right uh, so a heavy investment goes on in the industry to automate to uh, uh, to you know to automatically generate code for you which is repetitive right and now there are a bunch of new platforms that in, that are um, uh, coming up with the ai and everything that is going on in the market so but how meta programming works right so there are certain uh, ways in which meta programming is basically works in the background right and you might have heard about those but the first one is reflection right? reflection is a fundamental mechanism in meta programming that allows the program to introspect and modify its own structure at runtime right reflection basically provides classes and apis to examine and manipulate classes uh, methods fields annotations and other whatever program elements dynamically it enables accessing metadata invoking methods dynamically and modifying the behavior and structure of classes right so reflection is a is a common pattern and java uses reflection heavily we are going to look at one of the examples next is class loading and dynamic class generation right so meta programming often involves dynamically creating and loading classes at runtime right a class loader is responsible for locating loading and linking classes right locating loading and linking classes meta programming can utilize the class loaders to generate classes dynamically based on the provided specification like we talked about json or whatever or templates it involves creating class byte codes or method byte codes whatever and then defining the class using the class loader and then linking it with the existing classes basically joining or attaching it right next is byte code manipulation so byte code manipulation meta programming may involve manipulate involve manipulating byte code right which is a very low level representation of code which is understood by the runtime environment right byte code manipulation libraries or frameworks allow modifying or generating byte code dynamically again the example that we are going to see is we are going to look at how it is done this basically enables the modification of existing classes addition of methods creation of new classes programmatically right so to do that you have to internally you have to basically manipulate the byte code right so that is how meta programming at the top of it works so the libraries that is that are given to you say in java or whatever uh, internally they work you using byte code manipulation class loading and dynamic class generation reflections right next is annotation processing this is another very critical thing because uh, annotations provide metadata about program elements right if you have implemented annotations ever if you have not i would highly recommend yeah, you should go ahead because uh, a lot of heavily like if you know about lombok right so lombok is completely around uh, annotations right how are they how are they developing lombok applications and those are like uh, very good interview questions also you might get asked so definitely check those out but basically meta programming often leverages annotations to define spatial behaviors or instructions right so annotation processing tools analyze the annotated uh, annotations at compile time uh, or runtime uh, extract the relevant information and generates the code or perform specific actions based on that annotation right it basically allows the developers to define custom annotations and process them uh, to achieve whatever their desired behaviors are right so these are the underlying mechanisms that work together to enable meta programming right they allow developers to manipulate generate and also extend code dynamically which basically providing flex, uh, flexibility customization options at runtime right different programming languages and uh, frameworks may provide different um, levels of support and features for meta programming but the core principles and the concepts they i mean they are basically consistent right now let's take a look at the meta programming example like uh, so we are going to look at two examples one is the dynamic class generation right uh, and another is uh, modifying the class so if we take a look at a dynamic class generator program right in this example what you are basically uh, notice is the dynamic class demonstrates the usage of dynamically generated class right uh, the dynamic class generator uh, the class that you are seeing that generates the class and adds a dynamic method to it that is basically what it is doing right the java.lang.classloader is basically used to define 
and load the uh, the dynamically generated classes and finally uh, the method is uh, invoked using reflection right so this is basically dynamic class generation the next example is modifying an existing class right so if you look at this you will see that in this example the original class initially has the origin original method right uh, we use reflection to access and invoke the original method uh, on an instance of the original class right that is what we are doing then we basically modify the class by creating a new class called modified class right with a modified method using reflection we can obtain the original method from the modified class and invoke it resulting in the execution of the modified method right so uh, it might be a bit confusing if you want you can relook at what i mentioned and relook at the code but basically java's reflection api provides various methods to explore and modify classes methods fields uh, and other elements dynamically right which basically allows for powerful meta programming capabilities uh, this is an example of java but you can the same is also provided in python and all programming languages today almost support to some extent of meta programming now what are the benefits of meta programming right first is code generation we have already spoken about code generation i mean the entire thing is about code generation to reduce manual coding efforts improving productivity right and next is dsls we have also spoken about dsls how it is useful uh, next is dynamic adaptation. Now, meta programming allows applications to adapt to changing runtime conditions. Right? Uh, you have to basically understand, like today in today's world, the compute environments and all, and the runtime environments might not be same. Right? Uh, it might you are writing a runtime independent kind of an application. So wherever it is deployed, it should be able to run. Right? And this basically enables runtime decisions and adjustments based on system configurations, user inputs, or whatever external factors right this dynamic adaptation can enhance the versatility and responsiveness of the software or the application that you are you are implementing right uh, flexibility and extensibility obviously because meta programming allows dynamic modification and creation of classes and objects and runtime the flexibility enables developers to extend and modify the behavior of existing code right without needing to uh, modify the original source code so it can be particularly useful like we mentioned in libraries, frameworks, when customizations and flexibility are uh, necessary. But there are certain risks of metaprogramming which are also very important to understand. Uh, complexity and debugging. Yes, metaprogramming can introduce additional complexity to the code base. Not everyone is aware of metaprogramming. Uh, so it has a learning curve. Dynamically generated or modified code can be harder to understand, right? Debug or maintain compared to static code right the behavior of the program may become less predictable as it depends on the runtime modifications and configurations so it is complexity and debugging is a risk performance overhead dynamic code generation and modification may introduce a performance overhead right reflection based meta programming in particular uh, can be slower compared to statically compiled code right due to the additional runtime introspection and the method invocation right careful optimization and consideration of performance implications are very critical whenever you are using meta programming techniques right uh, next is potential security risks uh, it can introduce security vulnerabilities if it is not handled carefully right dynamically generated code can be prone to injection attacks and unintended access of uh, sensitive resources right so it is very crucial to validate and sanitize user inputs right when dynamically creating or modified code modifying code to prevent security breaches uh, next is yes maintenance and compatibility uh, because dynamically generated or modified code can uh, i mean may require additional effort to maintain and ensure uh, compatibility across different platforms and runtime environments right so changes in the underlying system or libraries may impact the behavior of the meta programmed code which might require updates which might require adjustments right so these are various risks of meta programming however uh, in today's world, dynamic code generation is the way to go. Uh, we obviously, that helps faster development, a bunch of benefits like we talked about. And whenever you are designing a system, also in interviews, it it helps a lot if you talk about like, like dependency injection and all these kind of plugin architectures, frameworks, libraries, basically shows that you have gone in depth, not just at the, at the, at the high level, right? You have gone in depth of the technical understanding of how these things work like right? for example dependency injection or like annotation processing these are everywhere today if you are writing code uh, and that basically gives an edge right so meta programming is very important and hopefully this was useful thanks for watching